Good morning, Bryce. <laughs> I had to tell my son I'd be right back. <laughs> uh, today's scriptural reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. When you have it, if you would say amen. Okay. And it reads as follows. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. But God knows was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would not be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one would think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. pastor has titled the sermon for today, Be Not Afraid, There Is Enough. Wasn't that good? Didn't Carl do good? Let's give him a round. Come on, give him, give him, give him. (laughs) Watch out, United Methodist Church. He's coming. He's coming. (laughs) <laughs> I'm really giggly about that too praise God this is a day that uh, I, I just feel God's just, just his shower of blessings on us today I, I ask, I've been asking this one uh, this particular prayer request on a daily basis for about two weeks now and it's Lord send the latter rain send the L-A-T-T-A rain Send the latter rain. Send down blessings upon us uh, that it just pours. And that we get filled up like that pool we used to have in the narthex. You know, I'll never forget that. That will always be my inspiration. I learned a lot going through that phase this winter of having that pool there and, and to see where we are today. I get real giggly and real excited. I, I, I think my uh, uh, a little hypertension starts to come out when I think about God's blessings around here on a day-to-day basis. I start to get real, yeah. I start to get real excited. When I hear testimonies about how a box of medicine suddenly appears on someone's uh, front porch uh, at a time when they didn't know that, that, that it was coming, when they really needed it the most, boom. I get real excited. I get real excited when I see one of our brothers and sisters come in one week with a, a cane or a walker, and the next week they're coming in cruising. Makes me giggly inside. I get excited when I come in throughout the week. And I see volunteers over at the BCA working, and I get real excited. Because I know God's doing something. (laughs) 
And I keep saying it's not over. And because of that attitude, it's not over. I think the Lord gave us his word today. We've heard it before, but today is for today. And he's uh, inviting us to remember to be not afraid. Stop acting like you're scared. Stop walking like you're walking on eggshells. Be not afraid. Uh, be who you are. Be who I made you to be. Be not afraid. And then he tells us why. He says, because there's enough. There's enough. Enough of what, Lord? There's enough of everything that you need, he told me. You see, I've been walking uh, by faith uh, since I've been here and, and not by sight. I've, I've been able to see some things that some folks maybe you haven't seen, but I've seen it. Several times throughout the week, throughout the year, God, like Paul, has taken me to higher heights. Where he took me, I don't know. But God knows. I've seen some things. I've seen the future. I, uh, when, when, when he showed me this, I can't help it, but I heard the voice of Martin Luther King. You see, I've been to the mountaintop. And I don't say that lightly. I mean that God took me to the mountaintop. And I saw what will happen. Now, what can, what will happen. And when I saw this, I began to weep. Okay, Lord, you told us you've been telling us you have a plan for us. I shared that with them. You wanted me to share that you have a plan for Bryce. But the question is, do we believe? We heard that was we heard our text today, which was read so clearly by Brother Carl, and I want to thank him for being willing to do that. And we heard the words of Paul. We heard that Paul was sent up into the third heaven. And as I sat here and I wondered uh, 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 where this was going today, I was, I, was, I was also given a note. And I was asked to read this prayer request, and I want to make sure that I do. Sister Brenda said, before you get your, your train rolling, will you read this to the congregation? And so she has a prayer request. She says, her friend Susan Crawford's mother is in the hospital at this very moment. She's due to have a heart uh, a, a, with a severe heart attack. She's at the hospital at this very moment, moment. She's had a heart attack and needs healing in her weakened heart. And you've heard the testimonies of how God has been present in our family already. So I want us, if you will, to remember that God's grace is sufficient. There is enough to go around for you and for me. And so because of that, we claim right now, over Sister Susan's life right now, healing. We, we claim right now, we claim right now in the name of Jesus and by his name alone, healing. That's it, and that's all, in the name of Jesus, amen. There was a man who went away for a while. He went on an international vacation, but when he got back, he was feeling extremely ill. So he goes to see his doctor and is immediately rushed to the hospital that very hour to undergo tests. The man wakes up. After the tests have been completed, he finds himself in a private room. 
and then he shuffles to the door. When he gets to the door, he finds that the door is locked, locked from the outside. Just then, the phone by his bed rings. He picks it up, and he hears this. This is your doctor speaking. We have the results back from your tests, and you have an extremely unusual virus. And we are completely helpless. We can't destroy it or even slow it down. Oh my God, the man cries. There must be something you can do. The doctor says, well, we are going to put, we're going to put you on a, a particular diet. We're going to put you on the diet that involves pizzas and pancakes, tortillas and pita bread. The man said, will that cure me? And the doctor replies, no, but it's the only thing we can slide under your door. Have you ever had days like that when Murphy's Law, you know that law, where everything that can go wrong goes wrong. Have you ever had those type of days where it seems that Murphy's Law is in full effect? Well, I'm here to give you some good news this morning. And the good news is this. God's grace is sufficient. Be not afraid, because there is enough. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Now set this manservant that you call to be your under-shepherd. Place him behind your cross now, Lord. Let him not see me. Let him see you. Let him hear you. Hear your word, Lord. And when it's all said and done, Lord, that you get the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. It is a fact that in life, God sometimes allows difficulties to come our way. But God's grace is enough to handle our difficulties. You see, God's grace gives us strength when we are weak. You heard it. It was read in, in, in our readings today. But here's the proposition. God's grace is always enough no matter what circumstances you may find yourself in. It is inevitably what gets us through. God sometimes allows difficulties to come our way, just as we read in verse 7. Now watch this. In this letter, Paul is dealing with uh, some false prophets who are trying to discredit his ministry <laughs> by saying that they are more spiritual than Paul because they have had superior revelation than Paul. However, Paul points out at the very beginning of this chapter that he has had revelations <laughs> from God that are indescribable. He says in verse 2 that one day he, had, he was caught up in the third heaven. Now, I want us to understand what heaven is. Uh, for some of us who wonder, what is heaven? I'm going to make it plain and simple. He heaven is simply the house of God. It's, it's where God abodes. It, it, it's, it's where not only God, but those who are closely associated with him reside. That's heaven. Heaven is a place where there's no more sin. There's, there's no more uh, sickness. There's no more dying. There's no more crying. There's no more weeping. There's no more welling. It's heaven. It's paradise. In verse 4, he says that he heard uh, words that is not even lawful to repeat. Paul, 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 Paul heard some wonderful things. He heard wonderful things that he was able, to, he wasn't able to describe. They, they were so far out there. 
what Paul heard, <laughs> we don't know. Do you know that extraordinary religious experiences often come at a personal cost? Can I get a witness? Anybody ever had a personal revelation with God? <laughs> There's a little tag after you receive a revelation. Remember Joe or Jacob when, when he wrestled with God? Do you remember the story of Jacob where he wrestled with God? What happened? Well, at the end of his wrestling, he hobbled away. When Paul entered into paradise, when he was taken into the third heavens, he came away from there with a thorn in his flesh. You see, God will give you something and then he will expect something from you. He says in verse 7, at least I should, uh, should be exalted above measure by the abundance of this revelation because a thorn has given to my flesh. Scholars and theologians, they all debate over this and they have been doing this throughout the years about the, what was Paul's thorn? What was it? Some say it was, it was a physical ailment of some kind. Some say it was a spiritual struggle. Others say it was persecution. What do I think it was? I don't know. And in fact, the Bible does not tell us what it was, not in Greek or in English. However, that's not the real issue here. That's not the real concern. The, the real issue is where did it come from? Where did this thorn come from? The phrase was given to me, which is in our text, tells us exactly where it came from, was given to me. And this phrase <laughs> is referred to among scholars as a divine passage. What that means is that God allowed it to happen just as he did with Job. Do you remember Job? He was stripped. God allowed it to happen to keep Paul from becoming proud. Notice what verse 7 says again. A messenger of Satan now of Satan, he called him out, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I exalt, be exalted above measure, lest I get the big head, this thorn has been placed in my flesh. The word buffet, that word means to strike or to beat with the fist, either once or most likely, repeatedly. The text suggests that Paul was struck repeatedly. Paul's thorn was not an isolated episode. I need you to understand this. It didn't just happen one time. It happened over and over, his thorn. It came up to prick him, if you will, constantly, over and over again. It came back on him like a plague. God did this to, for Paul's own good. God did this for Paul's own good. God did this for Paul's own good. He knew that pride would have destroyed Paul. He knew that pride would have destroyed Paul's ministry. He knew that pride would put an end to what he was doing through Paul. So he gave him a thorn. Sometimes we need to, uh, to have a different perspective about the difficulties that we face in our life. Maybe they are God's way of keeping us from trouble. Maybe they are God's way of getting the junk out of our life that doesn't belong there. Maybe it's God's way of saying, I see trouble coming and I'm on my way to save you. 
Look at how, God, how Paul looks at this difficulty and, 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 and the, as a result of God's grace. He sees this difficulty and he makes it in his mind that is the, through the grace of God that he has this thorn. Wow, that sounds contradictory. He says, therefore, I take pleasure in, in my infirmities, in my sins, in my weaknesses. I take pleasures in that. I don't take pleasures into a, 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 a man getting healed after I prayed for him. That ain't me. It's not me. I would rather talk about my own sin than to be boastful. He says, therefore, I take pleasure in my affirmities. I take pleasure in my reproaches. I take pleasure in my needs. I take pleasure when I'm persecuted. I take pleasure when I'm stressed out. I take pleasure, and I do it for Christ's sake. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I do it for Christ's sake. Although Christ did not remove Paul's affliction, he did promise to demonstrate his power in Paul's weakness. Knowing this, Paul saw insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities in a different light. When, we, when he had no option left, he would be forced because of this Thorn, he would be forced to run to Jesus. Y'all getting the message so far? You see, Paul, his, his total dependence was on Christ. On Christ. On Christ. Paul knows that when he is weak, he can rely on the grace of God. And through the grace of God, God will empower him to continue the course. That's why he said, I fought a good fight. I ran a good race. Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand something about God's strength. You see, God's grace gives us strength. Can y'all say that? God's grace gives us strength. Can you say it again? God's grace gives us strength. God's grace gives us strength for the battle. God's grace gives us strength for difficulties. God's grace gives us strength to endure. God gives us strength to trust. If God's grace is not enough, then the strength that comes from his grace is not enough. But it is enough. It's enough when things are going wrong. It's enough when we think we cannot stand. It's enough when we don't know which way to turn. It's enough when people or situations may be persecuting you. God's grace is enough. I, I remember the words of James written in chapter 1 and 2 where he says, My brothers and sisters, my dear brothers and sisters, Whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. Count it all joy. When they come up against you, you better know you're doing something right. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. God's grace is sufficient. It's always enough to handle our difficulties. My grace is sufficient. The Lord says, the fact that Paul prays three times, three times, not only was he praying, but he was wailing, he was fasting, and God three times did not take that away. He prays three times, uh, and it shows, uh, that, that it shows us an event that is now over and done with. Three times. After you're done three times, most people are done with it. Move on. Josh and Jake, didn't I tell you three times already? Don't make it a fourth. Okay? 
So over and over, he shows that it's over and done. Having gone through its beginning and the middle stage and now the end, it's done. No. Paul's threefold prayer, which that is, is a parallel uh, uh, of Jesus' threefold prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, which also culminated in the confidence that the prayer had been answered, even though the cup of suffering still remained. Remember, Lord, take this cup. Take it away. Sometimes, sometimes God will answer our prayers in three ways, in one of three ways. He'll say yes, or he'll say no, or he'll say be patient. Now, I, I get a little, I get a little beclimpsed, if you will, when I hear that, because over and over and over has he told me, Vaughn, be patient. Love them. Stay the course. So we have to realize that, that though uh, the answer may be no, it doesn't mean that God has not answered our prayers. It just simply means that he has another way in mind. So don't get all messed up. Don't start to cuss him out. Ask him why, why, why. He hasn't said no. Perhaps he's just saying, you're not ready for it yet. In verse 9, the Lord tells Paul the reason he will not take the thorn away. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. The verb sufficient simply means suffice. It means satisfy. It means enough. The promise is, is that whenever the messenger of Satan afflicts you, afflicts me, afflicts Paul, we will be able to continue through the sufficiency of his strength, love, and promise. We can get through the situation, the difficulties, whatever we're facing, we can get through it because his grace is enough. The promise is that whenever the messenger of Satan afflicts us, we've got to remember that when we're weak, that's when we're the strongest. So you better watch out. I remember what David wrote in chapter 43, too. He says this, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, <laughs> you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame even touch you. You remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, don't you? So in my conclusion today, I want us to be reminded, I want us to, to, to know where this, how we can apply this word today. Understand this, no matter what difficulties you may be facing right now, God's grace will be enough. Be not afraid. If you need healing, his grace is enough. If you need Help in a relationship, his grace is enough. If you have an unsaved loved one who's running from God, know that God's grace is enough. His grace is enough. On the highest mountain, God's grace is enough. Down in the lowest depths of the valley, God's grace is enough. Whether you're in the deepest of oceans, know that God's grace is is enough. It's enough. So today, as we go to our second portion of our activities today, I want you to know that wherever you go, know the promises of God. Know that you belong to God. Know that his blood is upon you. 
the shield, his buckler, his word is in you. And because of that, his grace is enough. So be not afraid. Stand. Stand after you've done all you can. You just stand. You see, when Jesus pleaded for God to take the cup away, he realized that he was praying the long prayer. And then he said, Lord, but you have your way, not mine. And he took that cross all, that cup all the way to the cross. You know what that cup was for him? I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. But just like Paul, I can imagine what it was. Take the agony of, this, of sin away. Brothers and sisters, there is enough. There's enough grace for us to share with everyone. There's enough grace for all. He proved it when Jesus went to the cross for you and me. He took on our sins. He took on our stuff upon his shoulder. And they whipped him. And with each stripe, each whip, Jesus said, with each one of these, my people are healed. His grace is enough. He and he alone laid his life so that we can have life more abundantly. And he rose from the dead and from the grave with all power in his hands because his grace is enough. And that's why we don't have to be afraid because Christ is with us. Christ is with you every day. So be not afraid. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. My brothers and my sisters, I, I pray that this week be a special week for you. I pray that this week be a week where you have a third heaven encounter with Christ. I really do. I pray that. I hope that you're not afraid to carry your own thorn and understand it's not guilt, but it's God's plan. And I'm so glad I have my thorn. I know I have one. I got about 10 of them. And you know what? I walk every day with it, and I know his hand is on me. His hand is on you. I can see his favor every day. Amen. Amen. Ask yourself this question each night this week. Will you do this for, with me this week and join me? And asking yourself at, right before you close your eyes of slumber, ask yourself this question. Where did I see God today? Where have I seen God today? God laid his life down for us so that you can have it abundantly. And we want to give you that opportunity, whomever you might be, to know that God's arms, Jesus' arms, the Holy Spirit's arms are stretched wide open for you today. We want to extend an offer to you to give your life to Christ if you haven't made that decision. If you have and you feel, feel that you've gone stray and you've been distant from the Lord and you'd like to be restored, we want to extend that offer to you today. If this is you, will you come to the front and just have a seat? We'd like to pray with you. We'd like to talk to you. But we want everyone to know that each and every day, Christ's arms are open for you, asking you to come closer. Come closer come closer and in that you will find joy you will find peace you will find strength to continue 
where there is bereavement. He wants to heal that portion of your life. I'm speaking to somebody. Holy Spirit, I hear you. Somebody's dealing with uh, missing a loved one, your wife, your husband, your child, your brother or sister, and you haven't gotten over that situation yet. God is speaking to you right now, and he's saying, I can heal that if you give it to me and stop carrying it with you. I hear the angel saying it right now. Is there one that will give their lives to Christ wholeheartedly? Is there one? Come to Jesus just as you are. Is there one? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for him saving all of us. Amen. When we all get together, what a day. Ooh, y'all know me. Yeah, I heard someone say, yeah. I'll be the first one in line to praise him. You see, I've learned uh, that I can't carry a rock with me. I, me and rocks don't get along. You see, me and rocks, we, we have nothing in common. <laughs> you see, rocks, you know, they, they, they'll sing for you. They'll sing for God when you're not singing. Well, because I'm always singing, I don't need any rocks with me. Hey, 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 I want y'all somebody li listen to this. When we all get to heaven, we're going to look alike, we're going to smell alike, we're going to dress alike, we're going to act alike, we're going to think alike, we're going to be alike. And what a day that's going to be. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. If the Lord were to take me right now, I'm ready. I'd like to ask that you would keep my family in prayer as we are currently at the moment. It is now kickoff time, and this baby is going to be born any moment. Amen. I, 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 we, we had a chance to be with my daughter yesterday, and she looks good. And, 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 and I just kept laughing because I'm so happy. A life is coming. Life is coming. And, and I don't know, you can, you can imagine when I'm already uh, uh, pushing my schedule, your, my time to, make, uh, 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 to be in position for this because um, I'm known as Mommy Daddy. You see, sometimes these kids don't know who they're talking to, whether it's pops or their mother. But I'm looking forward to another kid on my chest. And uh, will you keep my daughter Jasmine in your prayer um, as she is having her false contractions at the moment? So false to a guy means it's time to go to the hospital. So pray for us, if you will. Uh, once again, I want to uh, thank you, uh, all of our uh, visitors, for the first time, third time, or whatever time. Welcome, and we hope you enjoyed uh, the worship service today. We, we pray that the Holy Spirit has touched you in a way that will change your life from this day on, that there is some seed that has been planted into you that you'll plant into someone else. Amen? Amen. I'm going to put our musician on the spot, which I love to do, and I'm going to ask her to, to bring us a closing song. And I don't know if Brother Phil can join us. Amen. Thank you for your time, everyone. I'm sorry you don't have the words to this, but uh, I pulled it out today, this morning, and so I'm ready. <laughs> and this is a good ending song, Your Grace is Enough. Oh, that wasn't right.
It's just good that I listen to God. <laughs> 